Well, good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Peter Frank and I'll be leading this session today. We're going to be talking about launching a community event with your church website and we're going to be doing so with Church 360 Unite. Now again, my name is Peter Frank. I am the senior manager here at Concordia Technology Solutions. Oops, I just realized my screen still paused. There we go. Let me make sure that's shown right. Good. Sorry about that. I've done that once before and I got way too far into it, so I didn't want to stop or I wanted to stop and get that covered. Again, I'm Peter Frank, Senior Manager of Concordia Technology Solutions. And um, really, if you've ever attended a webinar in Unite, it probably was me leading it. Um, I've led so many of these because I just enjoyed this topic so much. I have been designing church websites since I was 12 years old. Um, we launched our first one, I think I was about 15. I should say I've been designing websites since 12, uh, church websites since I was 15. And it really has gotten me hooked. And it's not just websites that I'm passionate about. It's church communications in general and using digital tools to get the word of Christ out into the community. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, except we're going to be framing it as if we were launching a community event. Um, so the event that we're going to talk about today is a trunk or treat at your church. That's something my church is doing in a few weeks. And um, I always love that event because it's a great way to invite people from your community into your church grounds, at least because you're in the parking lot. But it's a good fellowship event and it's a safe environment for kids to do trick or treating, which is fun. But it allows you to keep the event kind of focused more on Christ than goblins and other things. Um, some people call it a fall festival. There's a lot of different names for it. We're going to go with trunk or treat today. So my contact information is, in, is on the screen, but let's talk about a few housekeeping items first. All right, so we are um, planning about 50 minutes for the presentation. I tend to go over. Um, we I say 50 minutes and then 10 minutes for questions. I often go into that question time period, uh, time frame. But we do have a queue here for questions that I can watch on my screen and see how many are waiting for me. So I ask you to ask questions throughout. That'll let me know exactly how much time or thereabouts that I should dedicate for questions at the very end. So go ahead and ask questions as you have them. We are recording this webinar, so if you need to step away for a few minutes or you want to watch it again, or if you want to share it with somebody else at your congregation, you will have that option. And my plan is to get it out later today. We're pretty late in the afternoon already, um, so I'm not sure if that'll happen. If not today, it'll be tomorrow morning, but I'm going to sure try to get it out today. So uh, if you are watching the recording, I'm sorry you couldn't be here live, but I do thank you for watching after the fact. You'll still get all the great information. You just won't be able to ask the questions live. All right, a little bit about ourselves. If you are not familiar with Concordia Technology Solutions, we are the church administration division of Concordia Publishing House. Uh, we've been developing software for churches since 1984. The publishing house has been here since 1869. We are just launching our 150th year, which is a very exciting time for us. The Lord has blessed us in many ways and allowed us to be a blessing to others. And that is what we continue to do, just in very different ways than back in 1869. And one of those is through websites. All right. So we are talking about Church 360 Unite today. It is um, My goal is to not make this a sales pitch, but I do like to give you a little bit of an understanding of what it is so that you can understand what we're doing. The principles that we're going to be talking about today can be applied to any website, but Church 360 Unite makes it very easy to do all these different things. So Church 360 is our suite of products, which includes Unite, Members, and Ledger. And I frequently present on those other two as well. So if you're interested in learning more about those, um, I'm happy to talk to you. Church 360 Members helps you manage your people and offerings and attendance data. Church 360 Ledger is all your finance, your chart of accounts, the transactions of the church. But Unite is what we're talking about today. And I'll tell you a little bit about why we call it Unite. Within a church um, online presence, you can have a number of different things. We call it our church website builder, but it's so much more. It is your church website, but it also is your blog, your member hub, your file sharing, your calendar source, and also your ability for mass emails. And we're going to look at each of those at various levels today because all of this goes into sharing information with each other, with your community, 
and beyond. So we'll talk about those audiences in just a second as well. But we call it Unite because it takes these different things, and there's even more than these six. They're smaller, but these are the six big ones. But it unites them into one site, one site, one tool for your church communications. So a, a little bit more, everything that we show you today will be um, mobile accessible. All of your public facing pages will be mobile accessible, whereas your administration pages will be best on the desktop. It does sync with your church management software if you are using Church 360 members or Shepherd staff, which I know a number of you are using. We provide things like daily backups, so you don't have to think about that. And we also provide support and training. And really, it's webinars like this that are a key part of keeping your website active. Because we know in churches, many times it will be volunteer-led, and people will um, move on to a new responsibility or maybe a new city. And if you don't have the proper training, some of these things will fall behind. And so we provide that with our support team and with the different trainings we do so that you can keep it up continuously, even if people come and go. So few assumptions that I like to make about the people who attend before we get too far. I am assuming you are at least familiar with church websites. If you have never touched a website before, I may be referring to some things that just don't make sense to you. But feel free to ask questions. But I'm assuming you're at least familiar with it. I'm also assuming you're new to Church 360 Unite. If you've been using this for a while, the things I show you in Unite might be fairly basic, but this is then where you can take the, the concepts that I'm sharing and apply it at a higher level and really think about it from a strategy perspective as opposed to just a how do you do these things. I'm also assuming you're extremely busy. So if you have to step away, that is completely fine. That is why we are recording this. I know so often interruptions is one of the hardest things, uh, hardest challenges of being in a church office. So I completely understand. All right, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Really, I wanna ask two questions. Uh, first off, I'm going to ask through a poll if you can select your primary role at church. This will help me understand who is here today. And as I add examples, I can contextualize it a little bit better. So if you can just let me know by clicking on one of those options, the one that most closely refers to your role at the church. I know that in the church, people wear many different hats. So this is your primary role. All right, looks like we've got a, a fairly decent mix. A uh, number of pastors, uh, administrators are almost at that same level, and we've got some others too. So if you marked other, please go ahead and let me know what that is. I'm just curious. So you don't have to, but it helps me get a better idea of who is watching today. And finally, I do want to ask, um, are you currently using Church 360 Unite in your congregation? Because depending on how many people we have using it, it may change how I talk about it. So yes, no, or no, but planning too soon. All right, looks like we've got a fairly decent mix between the two, so that's very good. All right, thank you very much for answering those questions. All right, so the outline for today. We're gonna go through an overview of the tools as we work through this process. So we're not gonna do a deep dive in any one of them, but it'll show you how they kind of work together and how you can place your communication strategy within these tools. Then I'm gonna show you throughout each one of those practical examples of how you can do it. So I've prepared some images in advance. I've prepared some copy in advance. So you're not going to be watching me um, kind of write out everything or design the images. So there, it's not going to go as quickly for you as it might go today launching an event because I did a little bit of pre-work. But um, it was pretty straightforward and simple. I always try to keep it from being too fancy or too lengthy because I know that um, as in is the case in most churches, there's just not enough time to do things too fancy. So, and then at the very end, we're gonna take some questions and I'll provide some answers. So please feel free to submit those as we go. So we're gonna be talking about launching a community event. This will involve a number of different things. We're gonna create a planning team group. So that's the first step is to get volunteers together and to begin planning out the event. And I'll show you how your website could be that hub for all that information without it being publicly available. In the today's day and age, it's very hard to get people for a meeting at any time. Uh, I lead our church council at my congregation, and we have yet to have a meeting where everybody was there. I've been leading it for over a year now, 
and there's always something that comes up. And we don't have a large group um, between the council and staff. It's about 12 people. But still, there has yet to be an evening where we've found everybody can make it. So that's where an online tool can help you collaborate together. Next, I'm going to show you how to add events to the calendars. And this is because often this is the first thing that you do to let anybody know that this event is coming. And it's real simple to do with Church 360 Unite. But with any calendar application, that should be the first step. Get the word out at a minimum level first. Get it on the calendar to block out any other events that might be considering using that day too so the focus can be placed on the community event. And then you start inviting people to participate. Once you know all the details, you can say, hey, sign up now, get it on your calendar in advance. And so we'll show you how to do that. We'll create a landing page, which might be a phrase that's a little bit unfamiliar to many of you if you're not in the marketing world. Um, we'll talk about that as we go. We'll figure out a way to direct site visitors to that landing page. Really take people who are just browsing your site and drive them to this event page. We'll talk about how to create a blog post. So kind of like the digital equivalent of your newsletter, how do you provide this syndicated content so that others can see it and see that it is a noteworthy item? And finally, how do you just push this out to your congregation? How do you email the people in your church about this event? So like I said before, we're gonna to touch on each one of those things in a various level of detail, but it provides really a, a comprehensive strategy for launching an event both for your members, but really more so for your community and how do you support your members and getting the word out to your community. All right, so as we go through this, I'm going to refer back to three audiences. First off, it's your volunteers. That's where we're going to start. That's really the most important audience to begin with because without the volunteers, the event probably won't happen. Then we're going to talk about your members. And while the event is partly for your members, you're also getting their support through things like donations or just spreading the word. So giving them enough information to help communicate this to your community is very important. And that's the third one. It's your community. How do you use your website to get this word out to the people you're trying to reach? Now, there's a number of different ways to do that. Your website is one of those ways, and it kind of serves as the home base for everything else. So as we get into that, we'll talk about that. That's really where that landing page comes in. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to switch to my, my screen to this site. This is Resurrection Lutheran Church, and this is a Church 360 Unite site. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so that you can see it. Now, any of the names and information that I share here is purely fictional. <laughs> There's not a Resurrection Lutheran Church based in Bakersville, Missouri. Uh, there is no Bakersville, Missouri, at least not that I'm aware of or that I can find in Google. So just know that this is purely fictional. I'm not going to be sharing anybody's names who don't need to be shared. Now, let me give you a little bit of an overview of how Unite works so that you can see where I'm going as I navigate. Um, we have different levels of users, and I'm logged in at the top level. I'm an administrator right now, which gives me this administrator toolbar. And there's things like settings and themes that are more of an overarching plan for your account. We don't need to get into that today um, because that's not what we're talking about. We have trainings available on that if you're interested. If you have any questions, I may be able to take those at the end, but we're really just going to ignore those two for right now. We'll get into it in a little bit as we talk about calendars. But then we're over here on the far left, you've got pages and next to that is posts and then activities, which we're not going to do too much of. We'll talk about briefly and finally users. Really pages and posts and users are going to be the key thing that we do today. So first off, let's talk about um, the group thing. So we mentioned before that we are going to start off with a volunteer group. So to get a group, I go up to the pages. And um, I'm going to slow for a second here because it's kind of jumping in by going to a group. But what we learn in the group will be able to be applied to things like pages and posts. And those are really the three things that you can do here, or the three things you can add up to your pages. When you go to the far right, there's a new page or add page button. When you click add page, you have the option for a blank page, a feed page, or a group page. A blank page is just what you would expect. It's a blank page. You can put anything on it, um, and you can put it anywhere on your site. 
a feed page is like a blog. We'll come to that in a little while. This always shows the latest content at the top. You add posts to it, but you don't remove posts. So um, it's adding to almost like a library of content. Whereas the group page is entirely different than either of those two in that it's almost like a site within a site. It's a place where you can have people log in and interact. They can talk with each other. They can share files. They can share a calendar. So it's, again, very much like a, pay, a site within a site, and there's lots of permissions. So this is probably the most complicated of the three, and we're going to start there because it's really not complicated. It's just more complicated than the other two. So I'm going to click Create Page, and we're going to call this oops, Trunk or Treat Planning Committee. Everybody loves a good committee, right? <laughs> so the Trunk or Treat Planning Committee is now a group. Now there's no content there because we just created it, but I can get to the group by clicking on this link right over here. Before I do that, I want to clarify a couple things. You have your active menu items on the left-hand side and your available menu items on the right-hand side. The active menu is what shows up here. This is your menu, whereas the um, available menu items are anything you could put in there. Now, whether something is visible or not is based not on that. That just shows, says whether it's in the menu, but it's whether your pages are marked as drafts or published, or if they're public or private. If they're private, only people who can log in can see those pages. But if they're public, then anybody can see them if they know how to get there. And so those two concepts are really important to highlight today. You can make sure that information is publicly available, but you have to provide a path for people to get to that. And as you think about your three different audiences, Maybe I should go back there just because I I tend to talk about audiences quite a bit because it's so key to get those right. When you think about your volunteers, you can be far less, um, I don't know, secret's not the right word, but far less visible because you have a better connection with those volunteers. You can direct them farther into your site. Your members are similar in that you have their attention already. Maybe not as much as your volunteers, but you have their attention. So you want to make it easy for them to find it, but it doesn't have to be right front and center. But your community needs to be able to find it immediately. You need to make it as easy as possible for them to see it. So as we talk about permissions, the group that we're doing, the planning committee, doesn't need to be front and center. And so by nature or by default, groups are members only. And you'll always see that up here. But we could change some of that. So I'm going to click on the Groups Trunk or Treat Planning Committee, and it's going to take me to the group page. Now you'll notice it's still my site, but it has its own navigation here over on the right-hand side. So this is our Trunk or Treat Planning Committee. It already goes ahead and adds in the title for me and the navigation, the things we can do. Trunk or Treat Planning Committee is the home page. You can have a discussion board where you can post something. You can say, next meeting is Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. If I can type right, make that an announcement and post it. Now, anybody in the group will not only see in there that it's been posted, but if they have their settings set to receive emails from announcements, they'll get that announcement just by doing that. So it makes it really easy to push information out to your group in a place where they can go and find it without having it be publicly available. Then you have events, your own group calendar. We'll come back to that in a moment and you have your group members. It's a member directory group. This is where you can go and invite people. So right now, I'm the only member in the group. That means I'm leading our trunk or treat unless I recruit some volunteers. So chances are the recruiting happens outside of your website, but you can kind of reflect that in here. So I have gotten Rob Calloway to join. I've gotten uh, Molly Chung to agree. Aaron Collins is a big part of that. Uh, in fact, yeah, I set Erin up as our director of this event, the leader. So I'm going to click on her name and change the role promote to leader. So now she and I are both group leaders. And then we can add some more people in there. Kira Belton, 
Natalia Schneider, um, Juliana Vasquez. We'll just add that. So that's a good planning committee. So what I've done now is made it so that they can access this group. And that's where I can set that is down here under edit this group. So edit this group gives you the place to put the details so that the group members know what it's about. So we have the title already, the description. We can make it very simple planning team that works on trunk or treat. And then I can add additional pages. So you see here we've got the home page, discussion, events, members. I'll, if we wanted to add another page, something like resources, we could do that. And this could be a page where we share the like art files, so what the event logo looks like, anything for sharing on social media, maybe some copy to share when you do that. We'll take a look at that in a second. If I check the checkbox, it'll show up in my navigation on the right-hand side. There's resources. Now, I'll have to update it. We'll go ahead and update it here before that page shows up on my permissions. Because I just added it, the page needs to refresh to display it. So if I go down here, all right, so that's where I added it. There's resources. Group details are visible. These are all the pages in my group, and I have five different levels of permission. So again, this is our planning committee, so nobody in the public needs to see that. That's what this is here, everyone public. So you could say that only Unite users see it. Those are your members, people who have access to your website that isn't to modify things. Then you can have group members, which are people that we added to the group. So some pages might be more appropriate to that group. And then only group leaders or a couple pages can just be turned off. Maybe we don't need the discussion board. I could turn that off. Or maybe I just want group members to see it. So we'll put that in there. The home page is fine for all, you know, um, all users because they might want to join and be part of the group. The events page um, is something that could be done for everybody, except since it's the planning committee, it really only needs to be available for group members. Um, then we have the resources page, which also makes sense only for group members. And finally, the members page. But we'll put that for all Unite users. In fact, I'm going to make my events available for all users too. So we have these different levels of permission. Finally, and who can join this site? Anyone I have who is logged into the site or only people I've invited. So you can say, well, if you stumble across this page, you can join. Or you can say, this is invitation only. I'm going to keep it for only people I've invited. All right, so now I'm on my home page, and this will really get into our next section, which is pages too. But you can see over here in the top right corner, I've got a draft there. I'm going to click in the far left-hand side, edit page, and this now introduces you to our page edit view, which is quite simple, but quite powerful as well. So first off, you have your layouts. So I could do a full square layout. See that right there? When I hover over it, I get the blue bars. I can do a split layout where I can have two separate but equal columns. I can have a divided unequal uh, layout where the first one is far bigger than the second one. I can also do it where I take that same concept but apply it to, oops, let's see. I don't know why that wasn't updated. Oh, I bet you I know. I bet you it's all the way down here. Yeah, it's because I'm zoomed in. It cuts some room out. But you can do it where it's more on the left side, less on the right side, but something up on top. Or you can inverse that and have more on the left side, less on the right side. Finally, you can also do it with three unique columns down below. Well, I'm just going to go with the single cell. I think that makes the most sense for this page. Then you can say, is it draft or published? It's best practice to do everything you need to on your site and then publish it. Don't publish it until you're ready for the world to see it. Then you can do the home, uh, you can do the URL. So like right now, Trunk or Treat Planning Committee. That actually sounds pretty good. I'm going to just leave that there. And this page will be home within that. Then we can do page title. Let's just go in here. <laughs> And then you can do the description. And I've got this already off screen. I'm going to copy and paste and save it. 
Now I can go in and edit the content of it. So here's the planning committee homepage. I can go and add a new image. By the way, this is where what you see is what you get editor, your WYSIWYG editor. It's just like an Outlook or any other email service where you can start typing and then format it and it works like a Word document. So if I go in here and click pictures and I say upload, and here I'll go with thin banner first. Oops. Upload that banner and click OK. I'm going to get a banner that's kind of stretched out. So if I double click on it and I go to advanced, I can say width is 100%. I want it to go the full width of the box. And the height, you pick. Unite, you pick it because I don't know exactly what the height should be. And I'll lock the aspect ratio and click OK. And there you go. So that's not too bad at all. I kind of like how that looks. Now I can go in and put copy that I've already typed in and paste it. And you can see here, here's bold text. I can change that and go to an H2 or H3 text. Make it a little bit bigger, more important from an SEO standpoint. All right, so. You can see my image, you can see my information. I'm gonna click save. And while that saves, I'm gonna stand up for a second. Sometimes as I sit too long in webinars, I start to get oh, a little distracted and tired. So I'm gonna stand up to hopefully give you a little bit more um, attention and stretch my legs. So thanks for your patience there. Let me go right back here to the page. Now you can see that my homepage for the planning committee was pretty easy to do. It's not super fancy, and you don't need super fancy stuff when it's all internal. But I've got my nice image, and I've got the details listed there. So that means that anytime somebody from the planning committee comes to our group planning page, they can see this information. They can't necessarily edit it because they're not the group leader, but the group leader can. So Aaron Collins, who I've added in here, could go in and edit the same thing. Now let's go over here to events. If I click on events, I get a mini calendar. This calendar fits within the confines of the page, but doesn't have anything on it. It's the group calendar, so of course it doesn't have anything on it because I just created a group. But let's say there are planning meetings every Wednesday night until the week of the, um, of the event. So I'll click here on October 3rd, and I'll say planning committee meeting, maybe we should say trunk or retreat. And it goes directly onto that calendar, trunk or treat planning committee, time and location, conference room, 6.30 to 7.30. And this event repeats every single week on Wednesday, beginning on October 3rd. And when's this end? Well, the event is on the 26th, so I'll put it on the 24th. That's our last meeting. Oops. And then I can put a description on here if I want and say the weekly planning meeting. And I want to invite people to the event. I want to select all the people in the group. So by default, everybody in the group shows up there, and then I check them by a button click. And now they'll receive invitations to come to the event. And this goes into what I was talking about before. Oops, wrong direction. There we go. So after you add the event to the calendar, you can invite people to participate. Well, in this case, it's just the planning meetings. We'll go take a look at the actual event in a few minutes. So I've got everybody invited, and now I can say, send me a notification one hour before, 12 hours before, one day before. And I'll click Create Event. And we'll wait a second while we do that. Let me grab my water. All right, so now my event is on the calendar. So it's just on for October. If I go to November, nothing's there. If I go to September, nothing's there, although you can see October 3rd. This is then where we might wanna go up to settings and change the color. So if you go to settings and calendars, Ooh, excuse me. it gives all the calendars that are available for the master church calendar. 
Now, a lot of these calendars were already in here before I created the site. That's because of my church management software. So things like baptisms and birthdays and confirmations and deaths, those are all in there from our church management software, Church 360 members. But then you have things like groups. So groups, of course, are people interacting online. They can have their own calendar that doesn't interfere with any other calendars. So just because you can see theirs doesn't mean ours has changed or gone away. All right, so let's scroll down here. Here's the uh, Trunk or Treat Planning Committee. It's green. Let's move it to a nice orange color for Halloween. Or we could do purple. Let's do purple because that's the color scheme that we picked. All right, so let's close out of settings, refresh my screen. I may have had to hit save there. Nope, there we go. So there is our trunk or treat planning meetings. And I can go in here and say, uh, add to my calendar. You see, if you go to participants, because I've invited everybody, now I can say, are you going? Maybe, yes, no, maybe so. I can say, well, I'm going and mark it there. Now, there is also the master church calendar. And so when I click on calendar, you can see here, there are my trunk or treat planning meetings. If I go to calendars, you can see that's one of only a couple that I have displayed. But I can click on fellowship and oops, VBS and worship and youth bank group and see where those all are. Well, nobody has them. Let's see. I'm going to go back. There just must not be any meetings for those. There we go. There's like vacation Bible school. So I just don't have a lot of information in here. But you can see this one is on the calendars education and VBS, which are education and VBS there. So if I take off education, they all turn blue because even though they're not showing for education, they're showing for VBS. So that's how easy it is to add an event to your group calendar and have it flow across to your master calendar. All right, let's see what's next. The next thing we're going to do we, um, is add calendar events for the actual event. So on the 26th, I'll click on that date, and I will say annual trunk or treat for community. And I can add it to different calendars. You can see there, there's education, fellowship, worship, and then a Bible study group and an Easter breakfast group. I'm going to add that to fellowship. And this tells me this event will be seen by everyone because everyone can see the calendar fellowship. Now for time and place. Well, we already put that in the, um, actually, no, we didn't. We will be putting that in there. So let me put that there real quick. <laughs> Oops, Red Oak Drive in Bakersville, Missouri. And the event is from 6.30 to 8 o'clock. I really wish our event was these exact times. Sometimes it seems to go rather long. And then I can put in the description, which because this will be public facing, I'll want to do fairly well. So I'll put this whole one in here. Okay. I can also remind people of this, but this means that my entire congregation will get it. You might want to pick a subset of your congregation, but it's up to you. So we'll select a few people and we'll say, get this two hours before. Maybe, yeah, we'll do two hours before. I could always add additional ones on there. So like at two, at six, a day before, but I'm going to stick with two and I'll hit create event. All right, so this is what the event page looks like. And I'll admit, it's not super fancy. There's not a lot of pictures, but there's a lot of information, and it's all helpful. And I can add comments and say, do you need me to bring any flashlights? And post that. 
and now I've commented on that post. And not only will your administrator get an email on the comments, but um, others can go in here and reply to it. So it's, so let's say the leader wants to come in and say, no, no, you don't need to. We've got enough. And you can say, okay, good, thanks. All right, so this is our event page. Now, one of the challenges with the event page is that it's only really helpful if you are already signed in. So remember our audiences. Our members will be fine to see this because they've signed in, but our visitors will not be because they have to sign in to get it. Um, actually, this one I think we set to publicly available, but still, they have to sign in to mark that they're going. So if they don't want to sign in, which means you need to invite them, then they're kind of out of luck. All right, so after creating a mail or um, an event, adding that to the calendar and inviting people, yeah, oops, um, there's our participants. Oops, did I? Yeah. Sorry, I got myself confused on who all I invited. There we go. So this one here is a fellowship event, so that's green, whereas the planning one is all purple and that helps to decide things too so you might want to put all the ministries in one color or maybe worship is one and education is another and fellowship is another that's up to you you have those options up here under settings and calendars all right let's see what's next on my agenda invite people to participate this one's easy we've already started doing this we're going to go to the home page And you can see right now, I have this nice banner for the Book of Romans Bible study. If I go to edit this page and double click on the banner, I will get a page that looks like this. This is my upload page. Now you can see I haven't used this a lot. You can also see any more assets on the site by clicking see more. But I'm gonna upload an image to this page and it's gonna be this main banner image. Click okay. There we go. So this main banner image, which I'll show you how I got. I'm going to get the sizing. Main banner. Oh. Apparently you can't see anything. That's okay. This is 940 by 645. Not huge, but needed. Oops. All right, so I'll click OK. And now it's really big, so I'll double click it. Oh, 940 by 465, is that what I said? It is, it's a perfect size. All right, now I can click OK. So, this is our home page, and it actually goes pretty well with the other color scheme. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Close out of edit page. Close my notification. And now I have this great banner image on my homepage. And I made this with Canva and I bought a third party um, graphic for the pumpkin and trunk or treat. But you don't have to buy those things. Uh, Canva's free. You can also do something similar to this in Photoshop. The important thing is that you use it because if you're using it, then you'll continue to see the possibilities. All right, so this now becomes our image, although under learn more, I can't click on it. There's nowhere to click. We can add that in, but I still don't know where I'm going to send them. But that's how easy it is to update your homepage. And everybody who's coming to your website will see this front and center and say, oh, that's interesting. Let me click and learn more. And that's where this has to go to something. And that's where the blog comes in. So I'll go under posts. I'll go under posts. There we go. <laughs> Um, actually, no, I don't want to go into post quite yet. I want to show what feeds we have. So we've got a number of different feeds here. We have an example feed. I thought there's more. News and announcement. Maybe I'm making that up. Yeah, there's a sermons feed around here somewhere. I don't know where that went. Oh, here it is right there, right in front of me. All right. Um, but. I don't want to go to that one. I want to go to news and announcements because we are going to announce in our newsletter and on our blog. Oh, uh -oh. I'm sorry. The screen is still frozen. My apologies. Thank you very much, Judy, for letting me know. Let me back up a quick step then because um, I was going right to the image. So 
I'm going to go back to the home page. Sorry, when I minimized it, it froze my screen and I had to hit the play again. So pardon me for that. Here is my image um, that's the right size and everything, but I can't click on it. I can't click on the link because I haven't set that up yet. And when I go up here to posts, this shows me which blog posts I have out there, which shows me how many feeds. And feeds can be added and managed under pages, just like groups were. So like if I wanted to add a feed, I can click add page, add feed, and run with it. We already have a news and announcement feed that's not really being used. So when I go and click on that, you can see I've got Vacation Bible School and Easter Sunday. Probably the last times I led some webinars. But under news and news and announcements, this takes you to that feed. And then the next thing will be to post uh, an event page related to the blog or uh, to the trunk or treat. This becomes your landing page of sorts. So um, there's a number of different ways you can handle this. Oops my PowerPoint presentations are done. So we talked about directing a landing page. Oh, I'm jumping ahead actually to blog posts. Sometimes blog posts can be used as landing pages, but I meant to do show the landing page first. So let me go back to there. So this is the blog. That's one of the pages you can have, but then you can also have an actual page for landing page. So I'm gonna click add page and go to new page here. And this is where it starts to get into um, a landing spot for your visitors to come to. So we'll kind of play back and forth between these two. And in my marketing that I do here at CPH, often we're doing the landing page first in the blog, but they really tie well together. The blog post provides more information from a narrative perspective where the landing page is all about saying, here you go, sign up. You know, move forward in the next process. So we're going to call this one Trunk or Treat 2018. Click Enter. And now when I click on it, I can go to this blank page. And when I click Edit Page, I get some of these same options. Actually, I want the URL to be Trunk or Treat, but I want the page title to be Trunk or Treat 2018 because I want my URL, which is the website address, to be as short as possible. Because if I want to put it on a flyer or a banner or maybe a sign scrolling, I want it to be as short as possible. So I could say resurrectionbakersville.org slash trunk or treat. That's kind of long, but resurrection and Bakerville are both very long words. But something like that, trunk or treat, trunk dash treat, um, something similar to that where it's easy to remember. And then the page title can say, well, this is about this upcoming event, Trunk or Treat, um, October 26, 2018. And I can hit save. All right. And then, oops, did it already? Yeah, it did. I should, I forgot I need to do those one at a time. There we go. So my page title still says Trunk or Treat, October 26, 2018, Resurrection Lutheran Church, whereas my site itself, my URL is slash Trunk or Treat right there. Now for this, I can go and click Edit Page, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. I've got all this copy already created, so you can see this here. I wrote this ahead of time, and I'll paste that there. Join us for our annual Trunk or Treat. We're going to make that a heading two. And then I want to add in an image. We can go ahead and click Enter. So you saw all this while I did this for the group page. Now I'm doing the same thing, but for a landing page. So we'll do thin banner. Click OK. There, that doesn't look bad. Now, what I might also suggest is a sign-up page. And while this is not an event manager, the events that we have are meant for members. So I'm not going to put this here, but if I want to use an outside registration, maybe something that requires payment, you can just put a link down here and do it. And so you can say register. Oh, well, I actually put registration is not necessary, but appreciated. I'm going to cut that out here. Post this and say register now with an arrow, and I can link this to any site. In the WYSIWYG editor, 
the text editor, you can say link to any URL, and I can put in my sign-up sheet there. So I'm just going to put in uh, HTTPS colon slash slash www.google.com. Not great, but a good example. So now people who see this can go and register. Now there's a few other things I might recommend. Maybe making an image for that so it's more noticeable. Um, there's a number of different free registration tools out there. Something like Google Sheets is always good. Airtable is my personal favorite. Um, but anything will, will, will work. And maybe just to send an email. You could do that too. But I'm going to go ahead and click Save. So what I want to do is go back to my home page and say here's my image link it to my new page so i click the link button i go to a page or feed in my site and i go down here to trunk or treat october 26 2018 and click ok now when i save that and go out of edit mode oops where did that come from that's where that went i was typing in the wrong spot before Oh, no, never mind. I didn't actually have the image selected. Here we go. I'm going too fast. Sometimes when I go too fast, I make mistakes, but I notice that we're getting short on time already. So I'll do this again. I've got the image selected, then I hit link. That seems to work, and I'll hit save. Now when I go out of edit mode, you can see here, maybe you can see here, but I can click on this, and it takes me to that page. And that's an important thing, is that the images should match. So when you're clicking on one banner and you're going to the landing page, it should be a similar experience so that you know you're in the right spot. So the image helps support that. Now, that is, let me go back to my audiences. Oops. Pardon me while I switch over here. Oh, wrong one. There we go. So the three audience, the volunteers are in the group. The members are the next one we're going to talk about, but community is available now. So we have a group page that only members can see, and we our volunteers can see, and we have a landing page that our community can see. But those that are in between, those members who are not part of the planning team but certainly aren't new to the church, that's the last step that we're going to do here. Maybe I should rearrange the order. But I like from actively involvement all the way down to not involved at all. So the last thing is what I started before and got out of order. Maybe that's why I started it because it made more sense to do it. Uh, my outline had it in this order. But I can go in now and I can go to pages and news and announcements, which is like our online newsletter. But it's set up in a feed. And when I click edit page, I can do a new post. And so the copy that I'll post, annual trunk or treat volunteers need it. That's an excellent type of thing to ask the congregation. We need more people, not necessarily on the planning team, but just to help. So I'll copy and paste this in here. And I can, once again, oops, add my image if I wanted to. And when I click Add Image, I can say show 15 more assets elsewhere on the site. There's my thin banner, and there we go. Now, the last thing I want to do is say sign up to help. To help or attend. I'll put a little arrow so people know it's a link, and I'll select this. Actually, I'm going to hit save. I'm going to point this to that event. Now, one thing when I go here and when I go to links, it won't show the event because it's not a separate page. It's dynamically generated based on the calendar. Oops, why is that not working for me? Sometimes it's pauses. Sometimes the browsers cause some issues. I know why it wasn't working because I hadn't hit create over here. That's my fault. Again, when I rush, I make mistakes. So let me do this one more time. I click new post. I'll paste the stuff in. Sign up for, sign up to help or attend. And I'm going to put it as publish, and I'm going to hit create. So now that post is out here, but I want to link to the event ID. 
to the event page. So I go back to calendar. And I go to my event and I copy the URL. And now I'll go back to my blog post, click that here, so that I can link to the event. Oops, there's link and a URL, and I'll paste that to open in a new window. That's what this target is to say where you want it to open. And then I'll click OK. And when I save this now, that'll update. And when I click Edit Page, it closes the edit bar. And now I can just hit Sign Up to Help or Attend. And when I click this, it takes me right to the event page. And I can say, I'm going. So now I can change my reminders, but it kind of brings me full circle again. Now you could, if you wanted to, have a volunteer page and just say, go join the planning committee sign up for the group. And as long as you make the group available to members, they can sign up there. The last thing I want to show you today, and we'll go back to my outline. We created a blog post. Now we're going to email the congregation because the blog post is the place that you want to send members and your congregation is who you already know. So this last step is pretty straightforward. I'm going to go up to um, users and click on mailing list. And mailing list is made out of anybody that I want to send an email to that is either a person or another mailing list or a group of people. So if I say, whoops, not Easter, trunk or treat. Actually, I'm just going to go with members because this is soliciting new members. So we can have a group with a lot of people or we can have a group that has many other groups like Easter breakfast is always a good one. Um, the trunk or tree planning committee, you get the idea. So I add who I want to send this email to and then I click the checkbox here and click email. Now this is going to open up in my default email client, which is outlook. And it's going to have a weird URL for this. We call this our email relay service. It's not your email address. This email address will come to our servers and we'll redistribute it one at a time for every member on that email list, which as you can see here is three individual or two individuals in the Easter breakfast list and the trunk or tree planning committee. So we kind of get them all in at once. Now remember your audience is members who are not volunteers yet. So I want to send them to the blog post because that's where the latest and greatest news is, but it's tailored to them. So then all I need to do is go back to yeah, um, my news and announcements and get my URL. Just go up here and click copy and I can paste that into my email. And I'll put some messaging and sign up here kind of thing. But this can then send people directly to the blog post, which sends them directly to the event to sign up. And then we can add other linkages there too. But I hope that that explanation shows how the audience really dictates which tool to use. And when you only have one or two tools, it makes it tough. But in something like Church 360 Unite, you have several tools to accomplish the same or different goals. All right, I have gone a little bit over time. We've only had the one comment in there. If you have questions, please go ahead and submit them at this time. I know sometimes I can go fast. I know what I'm doing here while I try to make it look as simple as possible can be a bit confusing. So please let me know if you have any questions on that. In the meantime, I'm going to pull up my contact information again. Um, whoops. And I want to let you know if you haven't already, you can start your free 30-day trial at 369 and do all these things. It's just delayed by time or limited by time, but you can do everything during the 30-day trial. The only exceptions are you can only have one administrator and you can only upload five megabytes of information, but that's more than enough to get a feel for Church 369. There's my contact information one more time, and I invite you, if you have any questions, to let me know. 
um, you are welcome to put it into the chat right now or send me an email or give me a phone call. If you're ready to get started with Church 360 Unite, if you like what you saw, you can talk to one of our software consultants. They are happy to help you get up and running with Church 360 Unite. But seeing as there are no questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. So thank you very much for attending today. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you can see how your website can be the hub for all of your online communication, especially when you're launching a community event. So thanks again. Have a great day.